Amen. Thank you so much. Ah, so this evening I thought I would talk about beginnings and endings. Seemed appropriate. So we need to be clear that in God, in the infinite, in the one power, in the eternal, there really is no beginning and no end. You know, that from a metaphysical view, if we were to look at this whole idea of you know, beginnings and endings, what's really happening is that this one life, this one power of God that lives through all of us is constantly metamorphosizing, reshaping, you know, recreating itself through and around all of us, moving from one form, one experience into another because it is infinite by nature and here in the finite there's no amount of expression of itself that will fulfill its nature. So it's constantly moving from one form, one experience into the other. Now I think we often experience that flow from one moment into the next, not necessarily feeling every little increment in time as a beginning and an end, but I think there's no question that in our human experience, we definitely have these feelings of beginnings and endings, right? You know, we have a beginning and an ending to our morning routine, to that conversation that we just had, the beginning and the ending of the day, the beginning and ending of a vacation, of a career. eventually, of our human lifespan. It's not about whether we're experiencing it as a flow from one moment to another or as beginning and endings. What's really important is how we're experiencing those beginnings and endings. When we're sensing that presence of God's goodness that's in us, around us, all the time, ever available to us, all these new opportunities to experience goodness beyond what we've known, then you know, we're more likely to be optimistic as one experience comes to an end about the new possibilities that that represents as we go forward. If we're feeling uncomfortable or have trepidations about what lies ahead, we're feeling separate from God. You know, we're feeling separate from that potential within us to make good of anything that comes our way humanly. And so tonight, I thought I would look at how we can support ourselves in those moments where that transition, where something's ending and something else is beginning, feels uncomfortable or painful. And I thought maybe I could share a little bit about my journey getting to the place that I am this evening. So in case you wondered, I did not just wake up one day and go, you know, I think I'm going to retire on June 30th. I need to go talk to Dr. Mark. This really happened, I would say, it's been well over two years. And I would say that what I was feeling was just a sense that's the best I can describe it is just a sense of something slowing down, that there wasn't as much of this energy of, OK, yeah, let's move forward. Let's get that next thing done. Let's start that new project. Let's, yeah, another talk. Can't wait to do it. Now, in the past, it's not like I've never had those feelings. If you think ministers don't ever have that sense of, really, I have to give another talk? I just did one. Or, <laughs> I'm teaching that class again now, but you know those are just those little ideas going around that, oh, I'm just not up to the task right now. And so I've used that spiritual practice that we promote of meditation, prayer, affirmation, to realign with that sense of inspiration, that sense of that good that's always there. And that has uplifted me and allowed me to move forward in enthusiasm, in joy, with whatever task was at hand. There was something about this, however, that just seemed different. It seemed persistent. 
So yes, I used my spiritual practice to you know, lift myself up and get through that next experience, but I kept kind of falling back on the sense of something is slowing down, something needs to change, and I wasn't really sure what that change would be. That was not comfortable. That was not a good feeling, right? We're so uncomfortable with the unknowingness of what is yet to come, right? So I realized, you know, Reverend Mark, I think it's time for some spiritual practice, like some serious spiritual practice. Now, in Science of Mind, you know, we promote that affirming the greater good that we imagine for ourselves, like that greater experience of health, that greater experience of career, that greater expense of prosperity, or loving relationship that we can imagine for ourselves by affirming that it's possible and really feeling it and knowing it and claiming it for ourselves, we can move beyond our fears and our insecurities and actually manifest that greater good that we imagine for ourselves. However, we also state that at any given time, when we're imagining what we would like to experience as our greater good, we're operating from our current level of consciousness. And we can't see all the greater possibilities beyond that level of consciousness. It's kind of like what Einstein said about the consciousness that creates a problem isn't the level of consciousness that can solve the problem, right? Well, the consciousness that sees what the greater good should look like isn't the consciousness that can see the possibilities beyond that. And so sometimes we need to step back and just be quiet and not try to affirm this version of greater good for ourselves, but maybe be open to greater possibilities. And this is when these spiritual tools that I talk about that we promote all the time really, really came in handy for me. So the first step in all of this is to get still. I had to get still as we do in meditation. And I know a lot of people think meditation is always about blissing out, feeling peaceful, but that's not the purpose. When we get still, we can observe what's going on in our inner world. We can see the thought patterns that are coming up that are creating whatever discomfort is there. So it's not always comfortable, but we create that space to just watch and be as compassionate as we can. And it's not like I didn't have an affirmation as I did this, but Rather than affirming any specific form of good, my affirmation was there's a greater good being revealed to and through me, and I open my heart and mind to seeing it and embracing it. I kept reminding myself of that and then allowed myself to spend time in the unknowingness, not jumping to conclusions as to what was to emerge. You know, and this is when we get to see those thoughts of, oh, everything's going to be so hard, or that could never happen for me, or whatever. And then we know where to direct our prayer work to do our work in consciousness to heal those false beliefs. For me, a lot of this was about what I would call shed the should. <laughs> I should feel more inspired. I should just be able to stick it out and keep going until the day I drop dead. I should quit right now, otherwise I might just really mess up. Don't we love that inner committee? <laughs> and so what I learned to do was replace the shoulds with coulds. I could try to keep going. I could try this idea of stepping away and really not trying to draw any conclusions. And then as our founder, Ernest Holmes says, you know, we do our work in consciousness, we treat, but we also move our feet. And so as I was doing the spiritual work, as ideas came up, as these possibilities of what, you know, I could be doing in the future came up, I would take the human steps to explore that. So I explored things I might do differently to keep going. Explored the options of retiring, or you know maybe there's something I could be doing part-time instead of full-time. Just 
Again, being open and exploring, gathering information. And do not think that this decision was made without me taking the human step of calling my awesome financial advisory team and asking them, so how would this look if I were to retire? And as I did this work, I just kept feeling a calling into something that felt like more spaciousness, more time with my husband Joe, us having the freedom to do more things together. Now, along with this kind of exploration, a tool that we promote and that, wow, did it help, is a tool of forgiveness. You know, to be able to move forward into a greater good, we can't experience that greater good fully if we're harboring old wounds, old resentments, condemnations of any kind. You know, those hold us back. And so, you know, when we're looking at moving into some, some greater good, we need to look at, you know, who do I need to forgive? What situations might I, might I need to forgive? If we don't do that, then we're carrying those people, those individuals, into our current experience. And quite honestly, I don't want to carry the people that I have to forgive in my new experiences with me. For me, though, the forgiveness, a lot of it was forgiving this whole process of human unfoldment where, as we move through our lives, we become more and more chronologically gifted. I think some people call it aging. <laughs> I had to really forgive myself for not feeling that same level of creative energy that I felt in the past. Forgive myself for not being able to just say, come on, stick with it. This is a fun job. There's so much good here. And then I realized there's nothing to forgive. There's absolutely nothing to forgive. This was not a bad thing. It's just this next phase of life that I need to open up to. And that was incredibly liberating. And believe me, I still do my forgiveness work on the number of things that I just think about that, oh, I could have done that better, or this might have turned out better if I'd done it this way. Those are things I can look back and say, OK, make a note of that, and learn from it, and you know, whatever I've gained from that, move forward. The other tool. And by the way, we don't do these in any particular order. We just keep doing these as we need to. This is what I would call the be happy now practice. You know, when we're in a place of ambiguity, when we're not sure about what's coming next, or when we haven't figured out the solution to a problem, have you noticed how the mind will just start spinning and spinning and spinning? Because the ego wants to know and wants to know now, right? So the mind can obsess about that. And that causes us to miss out on whatever good is in our lives right now. To me, it's like we're putting God on hold. We're putting our happiness on hold. We're saying, well, when I have this all figured out, then I can be happy. It doesn't work that way. God is with us right here, right now. And so in these moments, you know, when we're feeling like we're consumed with, you know, what happens next in our thoughts is to consciously put our awareness on the ways that we can continue to experience joy, playfulness, inspiration, loving connections now, even when we don't know what's, you know, what the solution is or what the next step is. It aligns us with that vibration of God's goodness that's here right now, that as we feel that, it's so much easier to see the greater versions of it, the greater possibilities of it, and to accept that, that what lies ahead for us. It opens us up to those new possibilities. And so for me, I mean, it, that really wasn't hard once I put my attention on it. I have a wonderful life with my husband, Joe, I have a lot of fun here at this church. I work for Dr. Mark Vieira. I mean, come on. <laughs> and look at all the people in the office and you know, just the people I interact with. There was plenty 
to enjoy as I was pondering this question. And then the final, the final tool that I want to bring up, the practice that we promote a lot. And I would say, if you ignore everything else I said, this would be the most important. If you do ignore everything I said, thanks a lot. <laughs> but, <laughs> it's my party. <laughs> You know, the 13th century Christian mystic, Meister Eckhart, said, if the only prayer you say is thank you, it will be enough. When we can dwell on the richness of the experiences that we've had up until now, dwell on all the good that's in our lives, it just fills us with that sense of all the good that's there in the universe and opens us up again to the greater possibilities. Now, there's just so much good for us to celebrate at any given moment, no matter what challenges are going on in our lives. And, you know, I think it's gratitude is like the greatest launching pad for us into our greater yet to be. And so, it wasn't hard, again, for me to find things to be grateful for. As I started thinking about this, I mean, it just, I'm not about to begin to list them, or this would become the sermon about beginnings and endings that never ended. But um, it's you know, about being able to, to just look. And I remember when I first talked to Dr. Mark about you know, that I was looking to retire on this day, at the end of this day. And him saying to me, wow, you know, 20 years. I've been here for 20 years as a minister, 15 and a half as his assistant minister. And he said to me, it's been a great run, and it's been fun. And boy, is that true. When I think of just how I have grown through this experience, all the good that I've experienced, with all of you, with this community. It's just, it just fills me up and it just gives me such a sense of this, I have all of this to bring into my next experience. And that's really helpful, you know, if you've experienced a loss that's really painful to think of all the good that that experience brought to you that you still have to bring forth into your next experience as you go forward. And then another thing I added to that step of gratitude for myself was to reflect on things that I would never, ever have imagined, just amazing things that happened to me while I was in this job, and to then think about, well, what amazing things are going to happen as I go forward? I'm open to it. So I just wanted to share two with you. And one was, who would have thought that one day I would be driving along Oxnard Boulevard coming into church, and I'm on my Bluetooth on my cell phone talking to Debbie Reynolds, <laughs> who is consulting with me about a family and friends gathering that she's planning for her dear friend, our beloved congregant, Paula Kent Meehan, who had made her transition, and we had done her memorial service, but they were going to have a gathering on what would have been Paula's birthday. And she's sharing with me ideas about what she wants us to do at the gathering. And she says, so I'd like us to end by singing Paula's favorite song. That's what friends are for. I don't know if you've heard it. It goes like this. <laughs> keep smiling, keep shining. I'm going, I'm driving on Oxnard Boulevard and Debbie Reynolds is singing to me. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> the other, who would have thought that one day a young man would come to me telling me that he would like my help in planning his mom's memorial service, that she was still alive, 
but that she was terminally ill and was expected to pass away within the next couple of months. And that she and his brothers and he would feel so much more at peace if her memorial service was handled. And so we do that, we plan the service. And then sometime later, I'm in the church office and a woman and a young man that I don't recognize come into the office. And she explains to me that her eldest son had met with a minister about doing her memorial service that she would be passing soon. And I look at her and go, are you Vicky? And she looks at me and go, are you Reverend Mark LaPonce? I go, yes, I am. She goes, you're going to do my memorial service. I said, yes, I am. And we hug. And we come to the sanctuary. And she just loves it. And as she's leaving later, she just looks at me and goes, oh, this is so wonderful. I'm so happy. This is just going to be perfect. Who? Would have thought that I would be given such a tangible example of someone who could be facing the end of her life, have such acceptance about it, and really had this sense of, it's not ending. I'm just moving on somewhere, and I'm going to be here for the celebration. There is no end, folks. There is no end. There's just greater possibilities beyond where we are today. And so I just want to say that any way that I've served you, this community, that's been a blessing, I mean, I'm so grateful. But just know how grateful I am for the ways you've loved and supported me and enriched my life. And you know what? We now, collectively, have the opportunity to open our hearts and minds to the wonderful possibilities that lie ahead for all of us and for this community. You know, in the next few weeks, as I introduce guest speakers on Wednesdays, we get to embrace that and you know, welcome in the new. And when Reverend Sidney joins us in September, we get to welcome in that enthusiasm, that, that vibration of just excitement and inspiration you know, we get to open our hearts and minds to the greater yet to be that the universe holds for all of us and for our awesome community. And so I'm going to invite you to just take a moment to turn your attention inward. <laughs> Thank you. And so I'm going to invite you wherever you're facing any sense of things in your life ending and feeling uncertain about beginnings. Remind yourself that that divine nature in you is greater than any of your fears or apprehensions. That there's this presence in you that allows you to sit in the stillness, in the void, even if it feels uncomfortable and to notice and heal those fears and insecurities that may come up. That this presence in you is able to reveal new opportunities that you may never have considered. It's able to forgive and heal any wounds from the past that prevent you from moving forward in greater joy and wholeness. It can, in the midst of any human challenges you face, still come forth as joy, inspiration, and find happiness and fulfillment in the now. And that this presence can see and feel ever so grateful for all the good that you've experienced and that exists in your life today that can launch you in joyous expectancy and openness to the greater good the Spirit holds for you, that it holds for us all. And so from this place in consciousness, let us collectively remember that presence of God, that infinite light and love that fills and surrounds all creation, including each of us. We know that this one is ever available to us as a goodness that is greater than any human challenge we may face. 
leading us into ever-expansive experiences of its goodness. Let us know for those who are experiencing any kind of human challenges around fear of change, health issues, feeling not creatively expressed or fulfilled, or any experience of lack, financial or otherwise, or any sense of absence of love, that God is right there at the center of all these situations, revealing its eternal nature, its unchanging nature, its vibration of health and healing and wholeness, its abundance, its creativity, and its love. And knowing that that impulse of God's love is always for greater good, let's take a moment to set our own individual intentions for greater good in silence. And so whatever these intentions may be, greater good for ourselves, loved ones, situations in the world, let us absolutely know that God is at the center of each of these situations. And as we know that, good is revealed. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth. And so it's with a heart just filled and overflowing with gratitude that I release this word, knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so this is the time in our service for our affirmative giving. For those of you who are watching us online, um, there are several ways that you can give. One is to call the church office right after the service. We'll be here for 15, 20 minutes after service, 818-762-7566. And we can take your donation by credit or debit card over the phone. You can go online to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give and make a one-time donation or set up recurring donations. Or you can text the word give to area code 818-457-3419. For those of you in the sanctuary, we have two boxes uh, where you can drop off your donations as you exit at the end of service. But with that, let's just feel our intentions for this greater good that our blessings put out there in the world. Let's hold our hands to our hearts as we say together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. <laughs>
surround us. Let our joy be so triumphant that we rest in God and say amen. Blessed always, blessed always, for the arms of God surround us. Let our joy be so triumphant that we rest in God and say amen. Let our joy be so triumphant that we rest in God and say amen. Rest in God. So as we bring our service to a close, I just want to say thank you. Well, I have so many thank yous to say, but let me at least say thank you to those who are of service this evening, to Gail Pallott, who is holding vigil here in the sanctuary, and <laughs> practitioner Nicoletta Akim, who's holding vigil on Zoom right now, to our Zoom hosts, thank you. Lynn Romanowski and Mark Kroll, and I imagine Ray Regan is helping them out as well. And Liz Racy, once again, thank you for being there supporting us on Facebook Live. Here in the sanctuary, uh, thank you one more time, Adam, for making sure that we're seated heard over here. <laughs> to Doreen and Blair, who are running everything technically, and Nikki. Up here to our musical support this evening. Thank you so much, Dean. That was so perfect. <laughs> Nelson, Karen, thank you so much for being with us tonight. And to all of you, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, someone's waving at the back. <laughs> Brenda, thank you. Brenda, what am I, chopped liver over here? <laughs> Brenda is making sure my best angle is captured. <laughs> so a few announcements. Um, again, a reminder of ways to make donations online. Uh, first, you can call into the church office. Go to nhcrs.org forward slash give or text the word give to area code 818-457-3419. Prayer with a Practitioner is available on Zoom after service. Anyone uh, here who would like Prayer with a Practitioner, if you would just sign up, and uh, we have sign-up sheets in the back, uh, give us your number. We will be reaching out to you. A practitioner will call to pray with you. Uh, of course, you can continue to email your prayer request to prayer at nhcrs.org, or call into the church, and option four allows you to leave a voicemail with your prayer request. And, we check all those requests and send them out every evening to our practitioners. So next Wednesday, you will see me here again, but I will be with our wonderful Joanne O'Brien, who will be leading our Tizé service. So if you've not attended, this is a wonderful um, service that uh, involves meditation, chanting, and uh, you know, sacred readings. And uh, so I hope you can join us for that. The Abundance Workshop 2021, which is subtitled, A Science of Mind Tune-Up for a Happy Life. As, yes, as our board president Blair reminded us the other day that these abundance workshops not only expand our abundance, our prosperity consciousness around money, but about abundance, the abundance of good in our lives in all ways. And so Dr. Mark will be teaching that beginning next Tuesday for uh, four Tuesdays from 7 to 8.30 p.m. The cost is responsible giving, and that's gonna be on Zoom. And the book that's being used is the Abundance Book. You can sign up on our website, and I see that, you know, we are such a last minute church, I have to tell you, but I see people are starting to sign up, so please sign up. It's really an amazing transformative experience. 
Um, the women's group will not be meeting this Sunday. They normally meet the first Sunday of the month, but because it's 4th of July, they will not be meeting this Sunday. They will, however, uh, meet again in August on the first Sunday of the month, and very likely will be meeting in person. So stay tuned to that. <laughs> um, we want to let you know about a memorial service for our beloved congregant Earl McVeigh that will be held a week from Saturday on July 10th at 10 a.m. So those of you who knew Earl, uh, please join us to celebrate his life. Uh, our men's group this Sunday is not only going to meet on Zoom, but they'll be meeting in person. So Shay's going to work that out so we can be in the junior church or um, online on Zoom, and all men are welcome to that. We continue to welcome you in on Sundays and Wednesdays. Sunday right now, we're still only doing the 9.45 a.m. service, but when the numbers grow and expand, uh, we'll be able to get back to our two services. So come on down and join us. Uh, let's see, Zoom virtual patio, we will continue to do that. We'll still have our services broadcast, and you'll be able to uh, connect with your fellow congregants on Zoom before and after our services. Our Zoom meditation continues. I'll be on with all of you tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., 8 8.15, Mondays through Saturdays. And for all other information, just visit our website, nhcrs.org. With that, I would like to close us out with a prayer. Hold oh, hold on. What? I'm not allowed to pray? <laughs> Oh, I guess I should be. <laughs> so um, I th we got to do this right. <laughs> so I'm going to have you hold that. <laughs> and I told you I wasn't going to let you go without a bang. That's <laughs> 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 there you go. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I think you said something about confetti. <laughs> confetti everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Back at you, each and every one of you. Thank you so much. Oh my God, I'm verklempt. <laughs> well, I am going to make this short and sweet because I don't think I <laughs> Just how incredibly grateful I am for all the ways that God has revealed itself to us and through us this evening and for every evening that I've been here, for every moment of this journey. I know that we have all experienced some level of inspiration and awakening to that presence in all of us. And we get to celebrate that as we go forward into our lives. We get to open up to the greater good and that healing, that awakening that we've experienced touches others, it ripples out into the world. And so I give thanks for all the blessings we've received and how they continue to multiply. And in gratitude, I release this word knowing this. So I'm so, so grateful for it all. I simply let it be saying, and so it is. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>